our people to fall. So I told my secretary, I said, we've got to pray that they'll not be hurt. They all five fell, but not one was hurt. And Marlene, that's Rodney's wife, fell in St. George, and I saw her fall, and she fell with, right on the marble steps and fell with that right under and never hurt it. I know God had to cushion it. So you see, we've got to pray. Now, I'm not trying to get a big crowd to go, unless God says so. But uh, all of you that have the money to go without straining or pressing, you may go. Now, I do have friends at times when God tells me they cannot go. Then I have people that God wants to go and they don't want to go. Oh, yeah. They don't want to go because they don't want to fly over the Atlantic. Well, I've flown over by God's grace for 54 times. And I had to have, you know, by God's grace, I've made it. And uh, if you have the finance, why well, you may go unless God tells me otherwise. Now, he told me, my secretary said, there's a young man who wants to go to Israel with you. Can he go? He sends in to Revival Friday every week or two a tithe. And I prayed, and I said, no, he can't go. I said, you have to write him. Tell him he can't go. Do you think that was easy for me to tell him? No, a, tour ho a tour leader wants everyone to go, usually, don't they? I said, now God tells me he can't go. So they wrote and told him that he could not go. Three to four months later when we left, he was on the operating table being operated in surgery. He just knew that those, all those weeks and months in advance. And there's been others that wanted to go with us and the Lord told me they couldn't go. I don't know how many times it's occurred. Several times that you know of some of you ministers. But it's very rare for him to tell me that you can't go. Because we need, when God sends me to Israel, we go for one reason. We just go for one reason. And that's to obey the Lord. To obey God and to love the people as Jesus loves us. That's why we go. And Tina told me after two or three uh, trips, she said, Reverend Helm, I wasn't with you long until I saw and observed that you did not go to Israel or the Far East or any country to see sites and to travel. I saw that you only went to love the people. Now, what do you think of that? That's what she told me. She said in the second, the first or second, the second trip, you know what she told me? She said, Reverend Helm, you have taught me not to worry. You have taught me to trust and not worry and stew because God will work everything out somehow. Now for us to go in less than six weeks, it is, but it is. They, they'll have, we'll have a time of trying to get planes. I don't know what. You see, we may, we'll have a, a struggle to get planes. Because I, I, all I know is, I guess that's a high. Is that is that it? So you see, a lot of people be going. So it's going to take God's mercy to ever get us there at that time. And we always, we've always had a problem. Nearly every time getting planes to take us. And she'll say, Reverend Helm, we're having an awful struggle, but I believe it'll work out somehow. God always has. When he's told you, it's always worked out some way. So we've got to pray hard about that. Because when I came in here, I had any idea that we'd ever go to Israel. And 21 times, that's a lot of times in the land of the Bible. But Joseph wants us to come. He wants us to come all we can. So here we are, here we are in Denver, Colorado, sitting here in a service, and God tells us we're going. He, he allows us, permits us, or leads us. He permits us, allows us, or leads us. Well, he just told me. October the 11th to the 19th. Now, you see, everything's got to be right all over the United States. Because all of our people have traveled from over the United States, two to 3,000 people, total number, from various states, various parts of this country, 
has come all into New York City to go or into Chicago across. And if it all could be written up about all the wonders of each one and how they got there. And by God's grace, not one, not one person was hurt so they couldn't walk home. We have had people in France. I come into Paris and this woman couldn't walk. The leg wouldn't hold her. She could not walk. That leg would not hold her up. And I went over there and I took her by the hand and I asked everything to come together in that knee. And I said, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, arise and walk. And she arose and walked. Men had to carry her down. The men had to carry her. They, she, couldn't, she couldn't walk. And the Holy Ghost got into the knee and let her walk. I saw a big man fall. He fell at the pool of Salome. <clears throat> he weighed about 215 to 20 pounds. And of course, it was all swollen up. The bones, cartilages, muscles, tissues, and all that was damaged and hurt. And it was all swollen. He couldn't walk. And I got, we had about four bus loads. And I went over there and I got my hand on his ankle. And I pled with God to get into the bone, the muscle, the cartilage, the tissues, the fibers, and so on, and heal him. We got to the church of all nations. And he got out of the bus and walked right in as always. Jesus answered prayer there and was merciful to us. It's by God's grace would ever be permitted to pray again for a soul that had fallen where they were injured like that. Now we've had a number fall. I have pled with people to hold to each other. And Richard, you have been kept from falling by holding to someone. One of the, the days that you said that, I took the arm of my wife and... Marion Smith, yes, Tina's partner, Tina's secretary, secretary, and just as I took her arm to hold her up, my feet went out from under me, and they held me up, and going into the and old you're city. You're very sure-footed. Yes, you're like oh, yeah. that. And I had good walking shoes on, but I, I remembered to obey because you had yeah. just told us that's that. It, that's it. And I yeah. hope I don't ever forget that. That's brother. right. Uh, now there's been how many people here that would have fallen there and held hold of someone? I want you to see all these would have fallen there and held on to someone. And if you get all the hundreds that went with me, it would be a pretty big number. And I had a wonderful sister in a western state, and she says, I don't need to hold on to anybody. And it wasn't long, she fell down. Oh, she hurt her knee, she hurt ear. I'll tell you, from then on, she held on. She said, I don't need anybody to hold on to me. Down she went. One of my dear sisters. She fell. It's by God's grace that we don't fall down. You know, and you, you just fall once, you can break your your back, your neck, your knee, your hip. You may recover, and you may have a, a stigma, an aftermath for a lifetime. It pays to hold on to each other, I believe. Our first trip down that down that uh, brook. You remember in uh, going to Salome from the church of the cock crowing. I cried, how many times do you suppose I cried for everyone to hold on to each other? On and on and on and on. Edward, can you and Jackie hear me crying? I was calling to the people. You can't catch it, Richard and Mary. Oh, I t I, because I knew someone was going to fall because the stones were, uh, they were just unpredictable. It was one of the most dangerous things that I had seen. See, I've been in a lot of places. And I knew if they didn't hold on, we would hurt somebody. Somebody would be very hurt. So it's wonderful that the Lord would keep us, protect us. So pray for me. I've got an awful big responsibility upon me. Every time we go, I'm responsible. For the time men and women, boys and girls, leave the threshold of their, of their home until they come back through. Because anybody happens, anything happens to them, they'll say, Brother Helm didn't have the leading. Right. I've got that responsibility. That's an awful big responsibility. We better read Paul's life. Yeah, I know, but that's what Colonel, Colonel Hartz will say. Colonel Hartz will say, well, Brother Helm didn't have the right leading, even though they didn't hold on to each other and they ate the wrong foods. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. that's it. Yes. Right. <clears throat> so it takes God to help me with the responsibility that I have because I, I want everyone to be well and accomplish God's purpose because... Every time we go, there's someone we're there to love in Christ. Not to press the Jewish people. So many, you see, the Jewish nation has been fed up with Christianity over their heads because they said, you ought to be saved, you ought to do this. 
God has taught me not to do that. Just go and love the people yeah. and let the Holy Spirit do the work. Yeah. Don't press them. Some people, one Christian said, it's, it's my delight to press Jews to get them saved. It's my delight. Well, you see, we're not supposed to press the Jewish people. We're to love one another. See, we're not, we're not to press anyone. Uh, we're to love people until the Holy Spirit woos them to repentance. And I, see, I have to teach the people this. Because if I don't, we won't know it unless the Holy Spirit's already revealed it. The Holy Spirit can make the drawing and the leading. Hallelujah. Well, John, we've had a great time. I don't want to stop. Uh, thank you. You have sure handed the water to me, and it is so good. We, we just appreciate you sharing, brother. Listen, I, I'm, I'm privileged. It's my privilege. Because, see, when I'm with you all, I'm with my family of the Lord. I'm at home. Once in a while, I, I with someone, you know, that may not understand me. But uh, when I'm with people that that love the Lord, then I'm at home. I'm very happy. I can hardly get stopped. See, I was at Herb and Gina, Gina's today, and we had such a great time. We couldn't hardly stop, good with Gina. I was, oh, I was so happy. And Herb says, just come and live with us. <laughs> yeah, we had such a great time. Well, we did. Yeah. You just said, well, wouldn't it be great if we could just live like this all the time? Be this way all the time with each other. Yes. Purity and holiness. That's it. That's it. Oh, and that's the truth. That helped me. Yes, we had such a great meeting. It was worth my trip from home to Denver today to be with Herb and Gina today. And John and Barbara and the babies. And they behaved so well. Oh, I tell you, it was worth my trip. It might touch your heart. That's what I thought. Yeah. Because see, the video is this one. What if I had gone to sightseeing? Because see, John could have taken me up in the mountains, yes, and my wife wanted to see those cities that he is telling us about, which is very interesting. Yes, where they used to make gold. Yes, sir. I mine gold. And wonderful sight. But when I got awake, I said, I believe the best sight I need is Herb and his wife. Yes, <laughs> that ought to tell us something. Yeah, that's right. He's about God's business rather than what he had preferred. Yeah, because my wife wanted to go. But see, I, I just must do God's will. And the greatest sight I want to see today was Herb and Gina in their home. Because that's why I was supposed to go. See, there's hundreds of homes waiting for me in the United States, and I can't get there. I'm the age I can't do that unless God tells me. Now, he may have me in some homes. I've been in some homes in the last few weeks. More homes in the last two and a half months than I've been in I don't know how many years. Because this son is one of my dearest friends on earth. I haven't been in his home for seven years. I mean, we're close. I mean, through Jesus, very close. And his, his wife calls me dad and my wife mother. We're like her parents. I have been since she was saved 20 years. She's closer to us than many daughters are to their parents. Loves us with such a theme. That if she hears anything we need, look out. You're going to get it. Oh, everything. I'll tell you, too. She, she wants it. And if she hears me say anything and he needs to lie down and rest, look out. He's going to lie down and rest from then on. Whatever God shows me, that's what it's going to be. So I've got to be careful to say exactly what ought to be said. No more and no less. Hallelujah. Well, maybe we could have the offering. Wonderful. Well, that wonderful was so sweet. Yeah, it sounded good, didn't it, Margaret? Oh, you see, I'll never forget, Margaret, on our first journey. See, Margaret, when John came back to St. Louis to tell her about us and all, she didn't know what kind of people we were. And she was very concerned, you know, like any companion would be. And so God had had me to tell John what to do, not to press her or not to say this or that, but just to give her a gardenia one day and maybe some roses another day and maybe next week another some other roses and maybe in three days another gardenia or whatever. And it wasn't long so she is with us. And how long were we together, Margaret, till you thought it was one, to Jesus' glory, you thought it was one of the greatest times of your life?
You were in New York and Sandra? I was at the airport yeah. uh, getting ready to go to Israel and she came up and gave me a big hug. And you had her because God told me what to do 40, 42 years ago. That's why she was there to allow her. It was a wonderful trip. And then for that lady, she wouldn't add that hug. And you'd said on that trip that our fifth trip would, would be, be the, the best. best. She said, I think you told me, Margaret, that this trip was the greatest time of your life. It to was. Jesus' glory. Yes, it was. And I said, Margaret, it's wonderful. Yes. I prayed and I said, Jesus, what one will be the greater one? He said, number five will be their best. And it was the best. And the she told me after, the number, after number five, that was years later. Yes, it was. She said, this is the fifth trip, the fifth pilgrimage, and God revealed to you that the fifth would be the best, and it has. It was. See the, see the revelation, the prophecy, and the fulfillment. True. Amen. We got a lot to praise Jesus Amen. for. Yes, praise see, we're in, a, we're in a great place here. Amen. We're in a great place. So I'll put this back again. So it's wonderful how the Lord leads. That worked its way around. Maybe that's the trouble. I'll put it back. Something must be loose in there. I know the other mics that uh, Roger takes them apart and puts new places and they quit. Right. This will all be broken in there. But he's an engineer and he knows how to fix them, but he's not with me. All my staff of five men want to be here so badly. And my grandchildren and my children. They'd like to be here, wouldn't they, Edward? All of them. But God told me they were not to come with me. I had to leave all my children, my grandchildren, all my staff and their families. They all wanted to come. It would have cost thousands of dollars. It would have cost thousands of dollars. And if God said to do it, we'd just do it. We'd just do it. Take, that's all we do. If he said to, we'd just do it. And we've done it lots and just take, take a lot. God knows exactly what to do. Hallelujah. So glad George could make it. So you've been fed and lifted and held. Happy. Because you came starved. Long for fellowship and the Holy Spirit. A lot more peace here right now than there was when we started. Oh, I know it, George. Oh, man. Oh, brother. We've been in a high place tonight. Well, we've been in a high place. Glory and light. Freedom and encouragement. Wonderful. Wonderful. Just uh, all the adjectives. Yeah. Can't say them all to Indeed. describe where we've been tonight. It's so precious. So it's, thankful for it's it. It's been it's wonderful. Great. And I know everyone feels it, you know. Yes. What I say, I know is in the hearts of others, Brother Hill. I'm so thankful for this. That's report. because uh, you've been led. Jesus has been merciful to lead us through the Holy Spirit of our Heavenly Father. Thank you. Well, John, if you want to take up the offering, make the announcements at our service in the morning. Is it 9? 9. nine and in the evening at 6. Uh, Is that all right? Yes, sir. Lord That's helping wonderful. you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, we'll need a little help with you all. Did the air come on all right? No, it's just a fan, I believe, right now. The uh, air condition went out then, didn't it? I wonder if they'll find an engineer that knows how to fix it. We will pray. Find out here. John Stephan. See, it was right here, and I didn't know whether it was George or John or James or Herb. Oh, Jesus, we, we thank you for this moment, Lord, for these meetings, for those dear ones that have come here, for this fellowship in Denver. Jesus, we thank you for what you've done in my life, what you've done in all of our lives, Lord. We thank you for this message. Oh, Jesus, that we could get it in our hearts. Lord, we don't know how many times we're going to have to hear it. But, oh, Jesus, that you'd get it in there, that you'd cleanse our hearts, Lord, that we might be able to live this life, that we might be able to help and support the rest of the fellowship, Lord. I just pray that you'd have your way with each and every one of us. We pray, pray that the offering tonight, Lord, that you would bless and sanctify it, Lord. Use it unto your purpose. Jesus, that we might uh, go forth, Lord, and, and return in the morning refreshed and ready to follow you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank the Lord that Dr. Dyer and Brad was able to come be with us. That they would be willing to sacrifice and come all the way out here for one service. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Grateful for it. Amen. 
or the pianist. Oh, uh, Esther, great. The last one. Thank you. Sing if you can. Praise the Lord. Is your parents going to be here tomorrow? I don't think so. Oh, they're going to be here. I think they're going to be leaving um, tomorrow or Monday. They'll return to Lincoln. Okay. Well, we're so thankful they could be with us last night. Well, I was sure amazed that uh, yeah. I never had a chance to contact them, let them know. You know, they live in Lincoln, Nebraska. Yeah. And uh, we flew in here Thursday. And Thursday night I was here at the hotel in Oliver's room. And they were at a dinner theater 100 yards from this motel. Doors. Two doors north. To just just at a dinner theater. I didn't know they were there. They didn't know I was there. They're visiting my sister who lives on the other side of Denver, and they lit my they're just her a few hundred feet away. Yeah, you can. It's just all that separates it is an empty field between the Ramada Inn and this uh, family dinner theater or something. Country dinner playhouse. Country dinner playhouse. So I called them Thursday night at uh, about after ten. I said, "Is my is Jeanette there, my sister?" And she says, "No, she's out with her parents." I said, her parents. That's my parents. <laughs> That's my mom and dad. Uh, what are they doing here? And her roommate said, you know, we got to talking, and she said, are you here on God business? I said, yes, I am. I, I certainly am. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I had a wonderful conversation with her for 30 minutes plus. And, uh, I'm, you know, and I talked to my parents the next day, and they said, well, we don't know if we can make it because we have plans for last night. And... We're going to take Jeanette's roommate out. Well, they brought the roommate here. Yeah, I saw that. That roommate came, too. I saw. Yeah. And, oh, I uh, saw. I, was, uh, a, I consider that a great gift to me. Yes. Because, uh, see, the last time they'd ever been with you was in uh, 1974 in Lincoln, yes. Nebraska. Yes. That, uh, and my Jeanette was on an Israel trip in 1983. Really? Yes. And uh, oh. visited the fellowship here once. Yes. Wow. Yes, right. And they came and... I just marveled at how many things I don't I can't go into it all but the service was just bent to them. Really? Oh yes. Oh yes, no, without a doubt. Uh, Esther and I I just we just come in. See you, you came in there and you said I saw in my heart that I should give you the background. Well, that's exactly what they needed was background. You know, so so they can know who I am. Yes. Well, that's what they, you know, that's what and and then then these testimonies when John, I'm going, oh, this is, I looked at my, my dad was eating it up. When these testimonies of John, Fogarty, I thought, this is, this is exactly, you know, this is what will, he responds to. This will help him. And then he got down to John Stephan, and I, that's when I noticed it. And I said, oh, now I know this is sounds, this may sound odd, but I, I trust that somehow the subject will shift over to Barbara Stephan's experience before she, when she first met you. Because I knew the candidness and the honesty was going to appeal to my mother. And boy, it got right to it. What you know, the, her <laughs> things, her thing, you know, her experiences, and then how she ch her change heart. But see, it was just so open and so candid and so honest. I said, no, that's gonna, that's good because it's gonna meet it head on. Yes. And and in love and light, and uh, I just marveled at it. That uh, they, my dad said they they didn't know they were coming because this week was my sister's week off, uh, vacation, and uh, my dad said we had two, we gave it two days. We had we knew only knew two days in advance we were coming to Denver. So they were coming the very day I was coming here and seeing I'm here by because God said I'm to be here. Yes, yes. You know, yes. and so I thought this was great. I thought, now they certainly have something to think about. Yes. Uh, just that they were here within 100 yards, and I thought that was a tremendous statement. Yeah. And they came and uh, just 15 or 20 minutes and stayed the whole time. Also, they talked. Also, God worked it out. We stayed at the Fogarty's home. We're staying at the Fogarty's home. And they called while we were at... Pikes Peak, they called, and Margaret talked to them, and I, what Margaret shared, I thought, she, God just helped her so sweetly just to, to invite them with no pressure, but just love, and if hey. they had to leave after an hour, if they're weary, that was fine, you know, just no stipulations or requirements, and they stayed the whole time. Amen. Yeah, and we got with them today and went on a trip, and just, um, it was very sweet, all, all positive. And my mom said, uh, she is asking about your age. She said, it's a wonder that he can sing like he can. 
Because you sang it? a little chorus. It is, you it know? is, it is. And she marveled at that. Yeah, because my voice it hurts. And my dad, he, he was looking at this clock. He, he, we were trying to get back at 2.30. It's some clock, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was at the restaurant. I'm, <laughs> I'm back at the restaurant. He's looking at this clock, and I'm pointing at it in my mind. And, uh, and uh, he, uh, he says, oh, we, we're late. Well, the clock was way off. I said, no, we're, we're fine. And he told Esther, she says, well, I wondered. She says, you were... I thought, surely if we were this late, you'd be anxious about it, you know, and uh, worried. And Esther said, well, Lord helping, even if we were late, we wouldn't be anxious. And she says, oh, you were trying to put last night's message into practice. You would have endeavored to do that. And I thought, oh, yeah, praise She Lord. was listening. Yeah, he was. And then uh, we, you made a statement about uh, carnality when cars will drive out in front and you'll say, why did you? He said, yeah. we, he said we all got caught there. <laughs> Well, he caught. He said, "I think that he caught us all right there." <laughs> you know, but that was. I mean, I don't like going to it, but that was a marked change from 14 years ago. And uh, you know, some waters passed under the bridge since then, and Jesus has helped and, and uh, yeah, and answered prayer. And oh, yeah. see, this is to me, it's a great answer to prayer from 14 oh, years. Oh, such is my heart, Robert. 13 years. 13 oh. years since you were in Lincoln. 14 years since I met you, and I, you know, I've been a lot of praying, and I, I knew. That when the devil fights, there's only, so she can fight so hard, there's only one technique and one weapon that is more powerful that can stop anything the devil can throw, and that's wait. Waiting on God. Uh, that's waiting. I said, okay, I can't do it here. I'm blocked here. I'm going to do the last thing that I know will work. I'm going to wait. On God. I'm going to wait. I'm going to outweigh the devil. Glory to God. By God's grace. I tell you, by God's grace. Jesus being my helper, I say God's greater than the devil, and I'm just going to, my last technique at home, at church, and anywhere, is I'm going to, if it doesn't, nothing else works, I'm going to do it anyway, but I mean, one thing will work, and that's waiting on God. And God will break through. So I give Jesus the glory. This was a, yes, last night was a very exciting night for me. Wonderful. Well, it's precious. It's precious. Now, if anyone wants to give a check, you may make it out to Denver Christ Fellowship. Sometimes they announce that, and that helps. I just do my mind. Thank you. Right. I, I could only hear the last part. I didn't know it was a song, but that's the one the Lord told me, but I didn't know it was. See, Jesus gave that to her 
uh, two, one or two years ago. Before an Israel trip was ever announced by God's grace. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, you see, uh, so when she said, should I do this number or this number, I couldn't hear what the second was, but the witness was on the second number, and this is it. Thank you. Second number is where he told me, but I couldn't understand the title of it. What well, did you say the title was? Come with me. Oh, yeah. That's where the, what the operation was on number two. So that's that's a very well, that's significant because I didn't I didn't remember that that was the one that God gave her about Israel. It was so precious, you know. Here's a call. Won't be long. How many think they're going to go with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, wait just a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Are you going with me? 22. And I hope a whole bus. You know, a whole bus. Yeah, good, good. I'm sorry I had my hand down. No, 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 that's fine. Okay. I thought he was going, but I wanted to ask before I counted. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's 23, isn't it? And he's 23, and I'd be 24. And my wife would be 25. Well, that's almost a bus load to start with, isn't it? Almost. God help me protect it. Remember the service in the morning. Please pray because it's going to take God to help me recover. And uh, I need help very much in the morning. I pray for this headache and the situation of the brace of the brain. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we ask it. For all you have done, we'd like to have much more music. But the time has come. I was amazed. I didn't know that we had been here for four hours and 30 minutes. Now it's four hours and 35 minutes. It didn't seem like it to me, but it was. It is. So we pray as we go that you will be glorified and honored. Kind of hold this to your heart about going to Israel for a little bit. Any other announcement? Any other word? So I really stirred up this evening. I want to uh, say that our brother did that we've really been in a high place. Yes. I was thinking I wanted to get up on one of these high mountains and see what spiritual high the Lord would have for me. I believe that here in these meetings we've uh, been in a really a high place, and, uh, more than we can really realize. I think so. But I wanted to say that while uh, Dan and Jenny were singing this song. Yeah. God was working in my soul in a very special way. Amen. And moving in my heart. And I was trying to enter in on the passion and the burden that Isaiah had in this 40th chapter when he began to cry out for the comfort <laughs> of God's people Israel. And there was such a prophetic plea in his soul that the crooked ways to get to God and to God's spiritual kingdom Amen. and to the new Jerusalem would be straightened out. Amen. And after thousands of years, Brother Helm, the way is still not straightened out True. quite enough. True. And uh, my heart is burdened that in America and in Israel uh, that uh, these deep valleys of hurts and depressions and sorrows yeah. uh, still need to be exalted. And yes. there's so many crooked ways of programs and plans right. and achievements that's of men it. and that's denominational it. ways. That's and they're it. so crooked and that's right. still crooked. And there's so many high mountains of pride and right. exaltations, pride of, yeah. of preachers yeah. and programs yeah. and churches. Yeah. And yeah. the world is hearing the high pride of religious uh, clamor. That's it. That's it. And in all this crookedness, Brother Hell, my soul was crying with Isaiah that the way would be made straight, that these valleys would be exalted, these Amen. crooked places would be made straight, Hallelujah. that there would be a highway for our God in these yes. perilous last days. Yes. We're in the last days. Yes. And, and uh, this prophecy God is endeavoring to fulfill Amen. in our day, in our Amen. time. We're in the end time, Brother Hell. We're at the end of all this. It's true. And prophecy is being fulfilled. We're it. at the last of it. Right there. And that God is trying to straighten out these crooked ways. He's trying to do something. Uh, and uh, I'm in a high place and spiritually. 
and it's hard to breathe when you're up there. I know. Uh, but the air is clear, and God wants to tell us something. Amen. And uh, if I get anything in uh, in Colorado this trip, I. I, I want to be closer to you. I want to be closer to this message. But yet it's so sacred. As you oh. said, hold this to your heart. Yes. There's things we can't tell people, Brother Helm. And I don't now. want to be out of order tonight because I hope that our hearts can hear. But if anyone here is hurt by what I'm pleading with you about, just lift it to Amen. Jesus. Don't worry about it. Oh, but if our hearts can get tuned in, Brother Helm, God, we're in the last days. It's and true. while they were singing and while I was thinking about all this my heart was somehow moving to Israel I was saying in my spirit what about Israel what about God's Israel today is Isaiah's message going to be fulfilled is there a voice crying in the wilderness in our time is there not a bomb in Gilead to heal the herd of my people is there not hope in this hour will not God's people come to fulfillment in our day is not hope True. is there not hope yes, yes. and uh, yes, yet we've been told there's a hope that yes, there's a yes. perfect way Amen. and I, I'm encouraged that our hearts can be made perfect and Amen. if we'll come to perfect submission yes, yes. the church can be perfected yes. and uh, I've got to go some to have a perfect heart <laughs> but my, I'm crying out for that perfect heart oh, I'm oh, sorry oh, about my failures and my mistakes and sins but all praise. that's in the past your brother praises, your and if if, uh, if Peter, after he cursed and denied the Lord, could still become such a great apostle, I believe there's hope. Oh, there's whatever hope. you've been through, oh, whatever hope. mistakes you've that's made, that's whatever right. sorrows you've come through, uh, God will be with us. God will help us. There, there's time to get it together. And dear ones, in this fellowship, uh, God's trying to get it together for us. We're not following this man That's right. just to have a good time, no, just no, to, to die uh, to just fall. to uh, hear good preaching and no, good singing. No, that's uh, it. And when I get to heaven, God was I was feeling the other day that when I get to heaven, Brother Helm, I'm not going to get in because Brother Helm loved me. True. I'm not going to get in because I followed an apostle. True. But I'll get in if I obey Jesus. That's it. I'll get in if I obey the Holy Spirit. Exactly. And if I walk with God Hallelujah. and we're not anybody special because we're in this fellowship true, true. Uh, but uh, yet God's called a very special uh, servant oh, and, and I hope that we can get behind the Holy Spirit the Lord Jesus Amen. that's in this uh, servant get behind the uh, Isaiah like spirit uh, the, the prophetic spirit that's in his soul oh, uh, the Lord. John the Baptist like spirit the message of Isaiah like spirit that's on him. I hope you can follow that. I don't think we have to worry too much about the man, but the message is real. The prophecy is real. Yeah. The time is here. And in my heart, I feel he's the man God's sending in these last days. Oh, geez, but dear ones, uh, whatever you feel about that, get in it. Get 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 oh, victory oh, oh. over the that's problems. Right, that's right. Get victory over the differences. Get behind your pastor where you are. And get behind the message. Get behind the truth. Pray for the trips. Pray Amen. for the apostle. Amen. Pray for this message. Or pray it. for this prophet. Uh, that God is working with in these last days. Because the crooked ways have got to be straightened out. Yes, yes, I tell you, the everyone. valleys have got to be exalted. Got to be. Uh, these prideful things yes. in religion have got down. to be brought down. Yeah, to and be. the things that are shaken that man has made has got to be shaken. <laughs> to be. That, that which cannot be shaken that's may a, remain. But brother, that's we're in it. It's being it. shaken. <laughs> we're in the last days and God is shaking religion. He's shaking this world. And we're right on the brink of prophecy in the Middle East, prophecy the around the world. Now. It's being fulfilled. I was reading that's Isaiah a few days ago and I didn't understand it all, but I tell you, I feel it. And it's coming. And it's coming very, very soon. Yes. Jesus that's, is coming. I believe right. He's coming in my that's lifetime. True. I believe He's coming right away, right away. And so we've got to get in this. We've got to be behind it 100%. And 
We need each other's <laughs> prayers, Amen. not each other's criticism. We That's need true. each other's love. That's it. We must and, have it. Uh, in your local fellowships, uh, uh, people need help to die out. They need love to die out. That's right. Uh, they need uh, understanding, your love, your understanding, oh, your true. patience. Yes, Jesus. People loved us a long time to get us to Denver tonight. I know it. I know I, it. took a lot of love for me to get here. I know And it. so let's uh, love each other. Let's uh, <laughs> not criticize. Let's get behind oh, the apostle. Oh, let's uh, oh, stay you, right in here. Go to Israel if you can. <laughs> God wants you to go pray and He'll make a way Amen. and uh, pray for one another that God, the ones God wants to Lord be there will be there. Uh, I'm thankful. Thankful God allowed for me to be here. Yeah, My pastor too. got behind so me and thankful. dear ones have helped. So grateful for I'm it. thankful that God still answers prayer. Still answers and prayer. I'm encouraged. I'm looking forward to <laughs> the rest of the evenings. I'm looking forward to these meetings. And, and I'm beginning to get help, brother. Beginning to get up to the higher altitude. Getting up where the air is a little pure. And it's helping me. Praise God. Glory, glory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you, the Holy Spirit's on this servant. How God's used him. He's, he, oh, my, how the Lord's helped him to preach the gospel. Oh, my. Oh, it's so great. It's so great. Oh, it's so great. It's so, it so great. Oh, my. In the meeting last October, he got up and gave such exhortations that was clear beyond man and the Holy Ghost. It was so precious, so wonderful, so helpful, so encouraging. Hallelujah. So thankful he got to come. He was excited. He was thrilled that he could come. Or Jesus would work and lead and help his people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Probably excited. God just says, I'm with thee. Right then. Holy Spirit, operate, I am with thee. All right, says it again. We sanctify this now. We sanctify and hallow it in the name of Jesus. Because it's, uh, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And he is the lover of our soul. He's our deliverer, the perfect Christ. And oh, how our need is so great. And the need of the church is so great. And we just pray and pray and trust that we'll all be encouraged to obey this Holy Spirit and get all carnality cleansed out of us by walking with Jesus and letting the blood cleanse it out of us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, I'm not through, but my body, I thought I, my body could hardly sit up much longer. And for months, I get to a meeting. I wasn't tired at one in the morning. But yes, and today I've been more weary than I've been in a long time but man my age it's a wonder how God's helped me Amen. well he can help me in the morning and tomorrow night and get me ready then for travel we'll have a good action flight on Monday and then get into Salt Lake City uh, how many are going to uh, to Texas how many are going to Texas please get the names of the people and call Reverend Pumphrey tonight because he wants to know for sure how many is coming if you haven't talked to Reverend Pumphrey or to some of his people, whoever this is, uh, would you help help us get uh, get these names down so Reverend Pumphrey will know, because he wants to know who it is. Um, can someone write? Edward, you write these over here, if you please. Who can write these down? Okay, I'd rather I'll take the center section. I will take that. Just keep holding your hands up. It's Herb Hill and James Packard, and brother and sister Ryan and Sister Abraham, Rhonda, and, and, and Stephen, and Thomas, and Jeff, and Debbie, and Robert, and George, and Sally, and Esther. Oh yeah, we don't want to miss her. Now, you got all the names down, you can compile and put them in one section, and tell them that Oliver and I are coming. By God's grace, my wife, protecting. Because he wants to know about who's coming, you know, to Texas. The Lord help you. And he may have your name, but it'd just be a good thing to call him and tell him so he won't worry about it. 
just you know about how many are coming. All right, and now is there any other leading or guidance or revelation? Edward, is there anything I've omitted? I've tried to be thankful for the flowers and the food, preparation, and, and how uh, Herb went ahead and got arranged for this platform and the piano, get these rooms, you know. John gave him that assignment and he accepted it. And said, so we're awful thankful for this, you see, for uh, Herb and Gina to do this. It helped us. Oh, the hymn books, thank you. We take the hymn books and we lift them up and we put them on the chair when we're dismissed. And when we go into the hall, we'll kind of whisper, won't we, and pull the door uh, to without a slam. Most doors click. You can't help it, but you can real carefully. They can hold the door so they don't slam. Meeting in the... Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all that thou hast done for us, with us, to us this day, this evening. The superlatives fall in a heap at the base of the hill, so we have no way of expressing ourselves to thee except to say thank you and to praise thee. Lord, we ask that you would please help Reverend Helm and Mrs. Helm tonight to have multiplied rest the hours that we received last night Perhaps you could give them tonight. Give them healing in the throat and the body and all of the areas that they have need. We pray, Lord, for this uh, situation. Pray for strength, anointing for tomorrow morning. Help us all as we endeavor to return. Help us to be here on time in the right attitude and uh, good spirits. We thank you for the privilege of being in Denver. We thank you for this church that... Uh, has hosted us so so wonderfully. We thank you for their spirit and their persons and their wonderful people. We thank you for them. Thank you for the love that we feel with them and for them. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you again and again and again for all you've done tonight. It's been so wonderful the way you've led and guided and directed. We thank you for it. We are not worthy, but we just come to you with grateful hearts and say thank you. Continue to cleanse our hearts of the carnal spirit. Continue to work. Continue to teach us until we have it all cleansed out, we pray. We just pray that you'll be with Brother and Sister Helm tonight. We pray again for strength, for healing uh, in all these areas that need healing. We just pray that he will get multiple rest tonight as, as Kenneth prayed. We just pray that you will... Help him to awaken tomorrow refreshed and amazed that he was able to rest as much as he was. We just pray that you'll be with them and help them help Tina in the preparations. We pray that she'll be able to find the right flights, the right... All things will work out in the hotels and all the different situations that you'll help her and we'll give you the praise. Amen. Father, we continue in prayer to give you praise and thanks now for the blessings that we've received tonight, for thy leadership, Father, for the revelations. We pray for Brother and Sister Helm in a special way. Father, we pray that you'll give them tr multiplied rest tonight, that in the morning, Father, they'll feel so rested. Father, we just pray that you'll just uh, give to them all that they need. To each and every one, now we pray for thy help. Father, we pray that as we return to this place, we will return excited and thrilled. Father, we'll be rested because we look to Thee, and we'll give You the praise, the thanks, and the glory. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen.
wonderful time. Yes, sir. Amen. The blessing of the Lord has been sweet. His presence, dear. God's help ever present. I've been rejoicing because the Lord has so richly yes. given us all things. Amen. Amen. That's what his word says, you know. And we want to rejoice in this Amen. indeed. Praise the Lord. Praise I, uh, I got awake about one o'clock this morning after a few minutes sleep and uh, went in and loved my wife and came back and got on the telephone and began to call Israel. <laughs> Tina, of course, is not at home. She's somewhere in Virginia on vacation, Joseph tells me. But through Debbie, Charles and Billy's Debbie, I was able to know how to get into Israel. And I got Dina, first of all. And Dina said, oh, love your wife for me right away. Please kiss your wife for me. Oh, she said, are you all right? And I said, by God's grace. She said, are you coming? I said, we're trusting. <laughs> So I called and I couldn't get Joseph. And uh, called again, couldn't. So I waited then until about uh, one or two this morning. And I got him. And soon, I probably should have waited for all the rest to got here so he could hear this. Because I see there's a number here, not here. And they're not in on this. So maybe we better. Uh, I'm so glad that Dr. Dyer and Brad could stay over. I was calling Brother Richie this morning. I called 905 at 615. I called and I called and I called. And I called and I called and I called. 905. 
Oh, well, I called the wrong number. It was on my list in the 905. I called because I didn't want them to go without me loving them again. You have to leave. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, I'm so thankful. Praise the Lord. Oh, it's so precious that they could be with us. I thought it was so great that they'd come for this distance of over 2,000 miles round trip to be with us yeah. in this Amen. service Amen. for just a few hours. It was a, quite, a, quite a blessing to all of us, Amen. to them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if, uh, do, you, do you want a song now? Do you want testimony? Yeah, he wants a testimony. Now, it's your heart is throbbing. And um, it's right over here. Like that. That may be the shyest one here. It may not be. Sometimes it is. But when I get right in here, that's where the operation is. Then it operates again. You probably can tell it. It's right here. Right in this direction. That's what he tells me. See, and I don't know anything, but I know Jesus knows everything. So someone's heart's throbbing over here. I want to praise the Lord for his many blessings, for his love and mercy and all that he's given us. It's truly wonderful Amen. what the Lord has done. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, dear. So, uh, thank you so much, dear one. Uh, someone's heart's throbbing. I talked to well, Margaret, I talked to her this morning, and I said, Oh, Margaret, stand right up, sister. <laughs> I said, Oh, Margaret, isn't it wonderful how Jesus helped us last night? She said, Yes. And I said, Isn't it marvelous how he told us that we were going to Israel? And she said, oh, it made the hair stand it up is, on my it arm. It is right now. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, I'm getting it again. <laughs> I'm well, getting it again, again <laughs> she said. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just thankful to God that he let all of you come. It's been a real blessing. I just feel like being in Colorado and having all of you here, that we are truly in heaven here. <laughs> uh, it's so precious how Jesus could help us. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, someone else is over in here whose heart is throbbing. Uh, it's not easy sometimes, you know, to say praise the Lord. Yeah, it takes courage and power and spiritual. Yes, Jeff. I just want to say praise the Lord. Yes. He's made a way for us. That's and he's, me. He's helped us and <laughs> strengthened us and healed us and encouraged us. I and know. Last night he really helped us in the meeting and helped us to know that we can keep on going. So Amen. Praise the Lord right. for that. Thank that's you, right. Jesus. Amen. Oh, that's so great. Oh, I tell you, his face got a light on it this morning. Just, you see, Debbie, the Lord's encouraged you both. Isn't it wonderful that the Lord laid on my heart that they could come and they were willing to sacrifice yeah. to come? Amen. Yeah. Uh, something precious. And they would come from Miami, uh, get on a plane in just a matter of a few hours. And here they were coming in, and my brother and his wife didn't know who it was. And see, Edward and Jackie, they make over them like their children, have ever since they found them. In fact, the first time that Jeff and Debbie came in Christ Fellowship, Edward said, I looked at them, and when I looked at Jeff, he said something happened within his heart. He said, I can't tell you what all happened when I saw him. And he doesn't, that's, a not, that's not the usual for him. That's never occurred many times in his life. Then when I looked at Jeff, he, he probably didn't know his name until someone told him, but he said it just operated within him. Wonderful. And God was saying, here's your children, they belong here. Wonderful. <laughs> All he could do is just trust. <laughs> because see, his heart and her heart were lonely to be loved for Jesus' love. For God's love, not a manipulated love, not a press love, not an act like, but the real thing. That's what they were starved for. And tenderness and care and sweetness and the love of, of parents and the Lord. And Edward had to witness. I can get it in my heart as I say it again. See, the Holy Spirit talked to him. Oh, isn't this a great ministry? Amen. Yes, sir. It's a great ministry. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, we must have some people out in the halls. One minute. Charles, go out and call them in. Tell them if, if not, if they're in a great meeting, God's in it, and they can't stop it. But if they can, they might come in. 
<laughs> well, we want everyone to get in on what's going on. We don't know. Maybe more's out there than here, but there's something in, precious in here. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I saw Dr. Snyder, Oliver, and, and I saw Richard out here, and I don't know where Thomas is, but Thomas will be here in a little while. Oh, wonderful. So we, all these precious children, they're so dear to us. Hallelujah. Glory. Isn't it great? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, there may be a song or a testimony in someone's heart, and your heart's throbbing. Please obey. Because I've, I've been trying to find a, a people that would obey, not without me pressing them whatsoever. And usually the ones at the backwards holds the key of the whole place and they never let loose of it and never come through. In church after church after church throughout the world, this is what's happened. The people in your church when you first went, if they had just obeyed when you got there back 40 years ago, the very ones that were supposed to, they'd hold back. The ones that was forward, you see, and they'd go... Well, that's fine, but the ones that had the key was the ones that had the trouble trying to get up to tell it. Right. And if they'd obeyed, the fire had hit that place 39 years ago, 40 years ago. That's the way it is every church. The, the ones that hold the key is the ones the devil fights the most to hold yeah. them quiet. And the ones that want to talk and, and feel like they can talk better hold still till they are supposed to talk. But see, Jeff's real quiet, and he's never testified much in his life. So see, it took a lot of courage for him to get up. Yes, yeah, he was. Oh, in, when you said in that, I have the witness he was in that. You see, when he, when he testified the first time, I'd hear him maybe a year or so, a year or so ago. You see, I thought it was so precious that he'd have the courage, being shy, that he'd arise and speak for Jesus. I thought that was to be... A uh, commendable thing. Something to recognize with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we're thankful. Yes, Dr. Dyer. It's refreshing to be in the room here. I'm thankful we have an hour to do that. Um, I really got encouraged last night when you said it's not our knowledge that helps us to w follow God. Yes. Um, that's so great because that just opens up all kinds of space for me. That's right. That's because right. you don't have to have knowledge and no. inspiration and no. all that. No. You just just try like faith. Yes. So, so obey. That encouraged me, and I, I'm thankful to be here, and um, just is good to be here. Oh, it's good to have you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for how you've helped us. We want to give you the glory in heaven that this precious. These sons could come from Indianapolis and sacrifice. Wasn't it wonderful God laid on their heart to yes. come? Yes. 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 Oh, we can't praise Him enough for this. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Just be obedient now and let the Holy Spirit... Yes, uh, Kathy, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now I want to tell you, this daughter obeyed the Lord and denied herself way back about 73 or 4 when Mother Helen, for years, since 66... 67 had wanted her sons in this ministry and her daughter and her daughter was saved and she is a jewel and her husband a prince in Israel but you see this son had been hurt in this life and had been crushed so many ways and he's so tender and sensitive and when he was in school why his his writings would be so tremendously the gifts of knowledge that the teacher would say in front of the class, you copied this, you robbed, you cheated. And it made him out a robber and a cheater. And so it put a light on all the community that he, he was a cheater. Well, it made, because he wasn't at all. But after they'd said that so many times, he decided he'd do what they said. So he went to the library and just copied things out. And the teacher said, you've done a wonderful work. See, they had it in reverse. So he, he thought the earth, he, you see, he was sensitive and had to work all day for days and weeks and months and years by himself. By himself. When his father would take his older brother, was a big fella, and they'd work together. He had to pick up chunks of wood in the woods, uh, loads and loads and loads and loads of them. 
and he had been alone in the world. And when we came along, he didn't know what kind of fellow we were because he had been hurt and crushed so much. He thought maybe we were like a lot of people just kind of performing, act like. And this daughter right here, when they finally got to the waiting upon God in those 70s, she says, I'm going to go down in front. He said, I can care less. Sure. And there was a last session, and she came down early. She had to come real early to get a place for them. And once she got down there, and she brought him down, he said, Dad, when I looked in your eyes, I couldn't see you from back there. He said, I saw you were in this 100%. He said, I could see it when I got up there. See, he didn't know. And he had been there for I don't know how many stations, and he was wondering what was going on because he had never been in services like that seldom. She said, I'm going down and get a front seat, close to the front. And that's why we have them is because she pressed early that day. Now, I, I don't want to forget that because we hadn't, we would have missed them. We would never have had them. Never would have had them. And so I want to thank Jesus for her persevering. She had never been taught. See, I think you, weren't you in the uh, Roman Catholic Church? Yes, sir. And see, she was taught to be quiet, to be still, to be reverent, like all of us need to know that, and be very quiet unless God's in it. Yes. And she had to have a lot of God's help to ever get down there like that, because we were different than any one she ever probably ever <laughs> yes, seen in her life. She had to have faith to make the courage give her the power to get in front. Otherwise, her husband, we would have missed him, who had been crushed and wounded and hurt his lifetime in many ways I can't tell you about. He has not told me all of them. Because he don't complain. He don't tell you about it. The fact that he's been in awful pain since that bullet went clear down and just ripped all the flesh off. And... Uh, uh, and the doctor said he couldn't live. There's no way he could live. And he suffered with such pain, and they said he'd never walk. And he said, I'll walk. Walk in the cold until the sweat would almost freeze on his face, coming with all of his might to try to overcome this awful thing. And this had taken his, the flesh off of him, clear up here, and then went into hundreds of pieces. Bullets all exploded, and it's in his foot now been there for 20 years and suffering she says my husband suffered long enough doesn't have to be forsaken or forgotten he can be loved yeah. and he was loved I'll tell you from then on excuse me for talking so much but it That's seemed right. like I had to share it well I'm thankful I'm, I'm thankful for what God's done in our lives and for the help he's been and Reverend Helm I'm thankful for the lessons that you teach us in words and you show us in the way you act. And we had such a beautiful uh, example of that last night, how you were telling us about being obedient and the, the, uh, you walk on, on the uh, limbs of trust and obey. And uh, you had something in your mind and in your mm -hmm. idea was to rest or whatever it was, and God told you no, and you were instantly obedient. You, didn't, it, you put God above everything else, and we <coughs> see it. Okay. The, those of us that have been privileged to be with you for any amount of time have seen it time after time, and I'm so thankful, for that. So thankful for that. Praise, so Praise God. God. Praise the Lord. We sanctify this. And thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And to think that the Lord would come and, and help us like this, and that she would appreciate the fact that God had taught me about the little beginnings of denying myself and not doing my own will, but doing Jesus' will all the time from morning to night, dying out to all the things here that draw us from the will of God. And it's a constant pressing. So we're so thankful that Jesus has helped this family yes. to help us. Yes. See, because uh, I've had people to help me through the years, but seldom has any minister ever been helped like this family has helped me in all the earth since the ascension without request and without pressure and uh, and we want to praise the Lord how God's helped me to love the son because to have loved him like a son because his father and I were close before his death 
and his father was willing to, to hear what I told him. He said, I want you to know that you were talking to me tonight when I got through preaching at the Owensville Methodist Church. He said, you were talking to me, and I thank you for it. Yeah, he said, I thank you for telling me. And we became so close in the Lord. And then we'd find him years later, and God changed his life so he could praise the Lord. When I call him on the telephone, he praises the Lord most all the time. There's hardly uh, two or three or four seconds that there isn't praise going on the phone. Because he would praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. It's almost continuous. And I tell him, so, he has praised nearly continually. Because he's so thankful that the Lord has helped him. Because he found in the Holy Spirit life. Found in Jesus abiding. He had Amen. found courage and love. Amen. And brought his children to the Christian Academy. Yes. Yes. And they were taught to pray. Yes. They looked forward to get to the school early so they could pray with the the schoolmaster, and pray and pray, and it changed their lives. It changed their lives. Their oldest son, David, told me, he said, I tell you, after I got to praying early morning at school, he said, I could always tell the difference of those that prayed and those that didn't. You could see the difference during the day of their attitudes or rebellion or appreciation or cooperation. And, and so God made a great, marvelous work in the life of this Precious boy, because he was only seven or eight when I found him. But he believed. And you talk about serving me. Touched my brother Edward deeply when he saw him serve me so much when he was young. It was very touching and very moving. And so the Lord changed Kenneth's life and Kathy's. And then Kristen, you see, met the Savior. And last night, she, she was the only a real young girl we had here. Only teenager, nearly we had. In the whole congregation here, she said in the second hour, I'm at home here and I'm at peace. I haven't had privilege to be in a church to testify for some time. Now, wasn't that marvelous that this, she's kind of on the shy side. She's not a big talker. She had to persevere to do that. But she's been taught that. We've taught her that since uh, I don't know how long ago and she's had to press to do it. But see, every time she did, she was blessed. And others were blessed. That's right. That's right, brother. So it's an awful lot to praise the Lord for. Amen. What Amen. God has been doing Lord, Lord, for their Lord. home. And what he does for one home, he'll do for another home if we only have faith. True. To give Jesus all the glory and all the praise for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to thank him. Yes, Mary Jane. I touched my heart. The world will crash all of us in one way or another when we're children. I know. But in this ministry, we found love and we found acceptance and we haven't been put on trial. We've just been taken for what we are. I'm so glad. I'm so glad this young man was able to be found. I'm so glad he didn't go on through the world with crashing and crashing and crashing. I'm so thankful for the love that's come from you and you've taught us to love one another. It's so great. It's so wonderful. I'm so I'm so thankful that there's a redeeming love in this world that's moving through. I'm so glad that we could be a part of it. Oh, I praise God for it this morning. I'm glad he found me. I'm glad you found us. I'm oh, glad it's a we privilege, found Mary this Jane. love. It's so wonderful. I praise God. Yes. Praise the Lord, Mary Jane. Glory to God. Thank you, dear. Thank you, dear. Thank you, dear. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh. <laughs> those of you who weren't here you didn't hear the background of this man it's one of the most brilliant of minds probably on earth and here he was hurt so deeply when he was in the high school praise the Lord thank you Jesus thank you Jesus praise the Lord tell you, it's oh I tell you it was for us there. Yeah, where we, we try to find together. a place where we were sitting. Where we sit together and yes. talk to the kingdom of God 20 years ago. 21 years 21 ago. 21 years ago, right. On August the 3rd. Right. But oh, it was, was a great a thing to drive that by. It was a there. great day. That was a great day for us. It was a great day for us. Oh, it was a privilege. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. See, school teachers have a great responsibility to children. We ought to be awful careful what we say. Because the, uh, this young man here that she just shook hands with, 
was such a brilliant student yes, that his writings were so great that yes. the teacher said he was a cheater and a robber and told the whole class, all the classes that he grew up in, that he was a cheater and a robber. And so he was hurt. Even the boys at 15 and 16 tried to kill him and, and beat him with chains. If he hadn't been so strong, they would have killed him. So he was hurt and crushed because school teachers thought that he cheated and went to the library and got all these beautiful writings. And he didn't. He, he did it on his own. God had given him such a mind. But each teacher would make him out a cheater and a robber to the class. They were sure that he, that he did not do it himself. And class after class, and year after year, so he was hurt and crushed. So he didn't have any friends. You see, boys and girls don't want to be friends of a cheater and a robber. And so he was crushed to death. So when we found him, and of course I did tell you that after a few years after he did that, he went to the library and did what the teacher said he had done, and they said, you've done a wonderful work. So he saw the world was in reverse. So he was crushed, and he had to be loved, and he had to have wisdom to know how to find him. It took Jesus, Holy Spirit, to do this. And when Jesus helped us to find him, it, it healed him. Jesus healed him. In his spirit, in the subconscious mind, in the conscious mind. Even though his body still suffered. Because he's had great pain for 20 years. 22 years he's been in constant severe pain that bullet went through the leg ripped all the flesh off down to here went around the bone exploded in hundreds of pieces in his foot so he's been in constant pain for 22 years hurt wounded by society by the herd E. Stanley Jones talks about the herd you remember that the mores, the folkways, the situations that come up in the culture. So Jesus helped us to find him about 13 years ago. And life began. His life began. Peace and rest and joy began. See, the Lord sent us out to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to preach the good, acceptable year of the Lord. To heal people, not to wound them. We wound by what we say, not by a sword or a gun. The words, the attitudes that we say sometimes hurt. So you see, when God took me on that leading of the Holy Ghost in Selma, Indiana, in 1951, little did I know I was on my way to get he, his father and mother, and his sister, and then Dennis. And how God brought forth such peace and joy and victory through the Savior, through the Christ, the risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sitting at the right hand of God now praying for us, sinners saved by grace. Amen. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus found me. Amen. Out in the darkness, no light could I see. Oh, what a wonder. He put his strong arm under and wonders of wonders he saved even me. Amen. Glory. And so he is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the everlasting Father. And last night when the Lord revealed that we were going to Israel, October the 11th, this will be my 22nd time into the land of our Lord. I had any idea I was going because I don't have any plans. When you're walking with Jesus, that's as far as you know where you are and what you're doing. Right there. You don't have, see, Jesus has the plans. He always administers the plans to those that follow him, not to those that work it out themselves or even try to think it through themselves. He leaves them on their own. And what he revealed to me last night, see, uh, this precious son was just talking about the kingdom of God and going to Israel and what he said it. He'd said it before, but he didn't tell me until a certain instant. So I, I, I couldn't get through to Israel Right away, I had trouble. I did finally got Dina, and she said, Oh, love your wife for me. Please kiss her. That's the wife of our head guide in Israel that speaks about five or six languages. Been with us many times. Debbie Hill, your daughter, told me last night from West Virginia on the phone. She said, I was with him a few weeks ago in Israel, and the Jewish rabbi, a group out of Boston, said, We want you 
to be our guide each time we come to Israel. Will you do that? He said, yes, I will do that on one condition, on one exception. But if God sends a certain servant in the United States with his family, he said, they come first. I have to be with them. And when Debbie told me that, I kind of was, I don't know what happened. We were trying to be awful thankful. But I will be on a one condition. If this family comes, if Reverend Helm comes, then I am the, uh, if he wants me, then I'm going to be the guide. And that, I said, well, Debbie, this is very serious, very wonderful. See, here's a man, Jew, born in China, that we found, and he believes what God tells him. He believes. He has seen miracles. I called him one early morning when Jerusalem had six inches of snow. I had 359 people with me from 16 states. It was a terrible storm. Yes, sir. Jerusalem usually never has uh, much snow. No. If it does, it melts real quick. But this six inch snow was so strong that it just took the limbs of trees and just kind of broke them off. Do you remember? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I wake and, uh, and I got up at five and I called Paul Miller, my head guide, the one I'm talking about, and I said, Paul, we're leaving here right away. He says, well, Reverend Elm, I'll go right down. I'll get all the guides. I'll get all the bus drivers. We had seven buses and one or two taxis. He said, I'll get ready to leave. I said, we're going to this place as early as possible moment. We're not staying here any longer. Just as soon as we have breakfast, we're leaving here. He went down and the officials of the hotel, the plaza in Jerusalem said, you can't do that. The driver said, we can't do it because we don't know how to drive in the snow. He said, we're leaving. He said, when God, yes, he had to push the bus. He said, when God tells Reverend Helm to go, we're on our way. He said, he's the leader. I'm under him and we're leaving. You get ready. We're going. That was five in the morning. He got all of them together. It's no little thing to get 359 people together out of a 20-story building. It's a big uh, assignment. Yes, we had a medical doctor with us who was a surgeon. <coughs> we had, we had mm, certified public accountants. We had teachers and farmers. We had many types of people. And we had to get them all together. And I came out of the dining room. And when I came out of the dining room, there was a table here, many tables of people. And when I got to four men, I didn't know them. God told me, this man here I need to pray for to be healed. I didn't know his name, never seen him before in my life. I laid my hand on his shoulder, and I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, let him be whole. And when I got through, a school teacher out of Hartsville, Alabama said, do you know this man? I said, no, I've never seen him before. He said, he just fell out in the snow and hurt his knee, and he can not hardly walk. So I said, arise in the name of Jesus, and he's healed. And oh, it, it stirred Hartsville, Alabama when he got home. And I didn't even know them. But I was coming out of the breakfast place, and he said, pray for this man. We load up seven bus loads and taxis and leave. They said we couldn't, but we did. Now, when you leave the hotel, you go down a little incline, just a slight, and then you make a left turn, and then you have to pull up. And then we had to pray that those wheels wouldn't slip because you had to pull up an incline again. Remember that? Yes, sir. And we all got out of there, and in 15 to 16 minutes, we were out of the snow. We had come below the snow, uh, the snow belt. Our bus stalled. Our men got out and pushed. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Our men got out and pushed. Because, you know, when they're not accustomed to the audience, no, oh, they right. go too yeah. fast. If they go too fast and give it too much gas, while well, they're stuck. Oh, right. And so yeah. our men, you know, boy, they just hop right off that bus and got in uh, behind. Up the, you right, went. And up we went. Um, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> our men didn't dilly dally all wrong. They were out there at the work right now. In 16 minutes, we were out of the snow. But just after we left, 11 more inches of snow fell and blockaded the city. It had been 300, we, that was when we were going to be to Sinai, one of the great, in yeah. fact, the medical doctor. And the doctor of divinity said it was one of the great trips of their life. Yes. Yes. You see, if God hadn't told me to get us out of there, you, you can't get out with 17 inches of snow. No, no. Well, they haven't any snow plows. No. They blockaded the city for two days. And the water melted so great that it went down to the river valley, Jordan Valley, and washed out the road. And yes. was it two or three places? Worst big gullies oh, clear out, man. just washed them out. Sir, large, large, large things. Just stones stones stored them out. Torn the road. The just torn it up. Road had torn yeah. it up. 
Just absolutely moved it out. There's so much water coming down from the mountains. You remember that? How many remember this? Yes. Well, uh, we, we were on our way. And, and Paul saw the miracle. He saw the wonder. He saw the leading of God. See, if we had just waited a little while, it had been too late. They said it couldn't be done. He said, when God tells Reverend Helm, we're going. <laughs> See, it told me right. See, this ought to make a believer out of anyone. Yes, and it made a believer out of this man. Oh. And it made a believer out of some others, yes, sir. too. The Holy Spirit helped us wonderfully. And we were so grateful for the presence of Jesus. And when we got to a lot on Sinai, they told Paul, his driver said, we'll never get back on that river, that Jordan River Road. So it's washed out and we'll never get back there in three days. On our way back to Tiberias. They told him, they said, we'll never get back. He said, we'll just get back. And did you know when we came, they were just the bulldozers just putting all the stuff back and we just went right through. <laughs> those guys, those drivers said it can't be. It was. All of us went right through the yes, River sir. Jordan That's Road. Right. Yeah, Everyone right. with us remembers it. Yes, sir. That's right. So the Holy Spirit, see, he's a believer. My, own, my oldest granddaughter is 28 years of age, and I t we were, by God's grace, taken to Israel when she was 15. It was one of the greatest, she told me, the greatest week of her life when I left. She wanted me to baptize in the River Jordan. Well, usually I let the younger men do the baptizing. I don't do it anymore. I've baptized many times. I've even cut the ice when it was that thick. It took me uh, about a half hour to an hour to find a place deep enough to baptize when the ice was that thick, seven and a half to eight inches. And that, uh, I'd, the hole would be that way, and then not, I'd have to make another one. It'd be that deep, and another one that deep. And I just had to keep it up, but I found one that deep up to here.